Hello, welcome back to Technology Behind Business. Now, with the death of job security and the old employment contract based on loyalty, management gurus have been talking about the importance of building an executive brand for the past decade. And now, with the advent of the internet and the growth in social media, it's more important than ever to cultivate the right image for corporate success. But where do you start? Well, joining us with some practical tips are Cliff Rosenberg, Managing Director of LinkedIn Australia, Brian Geeson, Director of Strategy at 360 Digital Influence, and Carolyn Brown, Founder of Interview IQ. Everybody, thanks very much for your time today. Thank Carolyn, you. I might start with you. In terms of a definition, I suppose everybody is pretty familiar with company brands, but what exactly is an executive brand? That's a great question. Um, a definition that I really love is essentially what people say about you when you're not in the room. <laughs> so a corporate brand is Virgin, an executive brand is Richard Branson. Really strong identity, really strong sense of him being a personality outside of that corporate brand. The corporate brand might have shaped his journey and his identity, but it's not him. Mm. Are they pretty tough to get? Brian, I suppose these, these executive brands are likes of a Sir Richard Branson? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The way that we would define it at Ogilvy is that really an executive brand is what shows up in the top 10 results on Google when you when you search for the executive's name or for an employee's name, anybody within a company. Um, and it does take time. It takes a little bit of effort. It takes getting involved and participating within social media to build up that brand. Mm. Cl Cliff, why are they so important, do you think, in today's world? I think brands are, uh, your personal brand is becoming incredibly important because at LinkedIn we like to think of every individual is now a business. Mm. Uh, job tenure is on the decline. There's a fact out there that says that the average student of today will have between 10 and 14 jobs before the age of 38. So more and more professionals need to take control of their careers and think of themselves in effect as their own chief marketing officers. Is, so it's almost building your, it's important to build your own self-brand. Is that what you're then selling to potential employers, Carolyn? I think so. A, a strong brand comes from a level of self-awareness. So if you understand what your strengths are, the way that you like to communicate, what's made you successful as a communicator, then other people pick up on that. Mm. Um, if you're jumping onto something like LinkedIn, you need to have that kind of audit on yourself before you actually do it. I suppose, when, what should people do, Cliff, when looking to, to build it? What are some practical steps they can take in terms of building that brand? Great question. There's a few things one can do. On LinkedIn in particular, we strongly advise our members to develop a good, updated profile. Mm. So make it comprehensive, full career history, your education, get it complete with some good, trusted recommendations from colleagues that you know out there and that you've worked with. Get one good looking professional photograph of yourself up there, something that represents you in the best possible business light. And context is very important when we talk about uh, professional networking versus social networking. Um, so, not you at your 21st or something <laughs> like well, that. Well, definitely not something of you looking too silly at your kid's birthday party. Something that presents you with a tie and a jacket as you would like to be seen in a professional context. And I think importantly, as, as another tip, is develop trusted connections. So go out there and expand your network and knowing that quality is far more important than quantity of connections. So develop a connection network of, I would say, at least a few hundred for today's professionals. Um, I've got 1,600 trusted connections, um, a well-networked professional today, at yeah. least a few hundred, I would think, yes. A number okay. of people, uh, headhunters, when the headhunters trawl LinkedIn all the time for people. Um, Cliff's point about having a well filled in profile is really important because people look at different things. Some people might look at your recommendations, some people might look at the groups that you've joined, some people might look at um, your actual experience or your summary section. You actually don't know what things people find important. Brian, has this become a, a new phenomenon, if you like, or this growing importance around this this executive, this self-branding? I think it's become, yeah, it's become more and more important over the last couple of years, especially with the growth of social media in Australia. Mm. I mean, if you think about it, two years ago, there were uh, roughly three million Australians on Facebook, um, less than 100,000 or so on LinkedIn. And just in two years, those numbers have more than tripled or more, more than quadrupled. So the use of social media in this country is a way to, I guess, research new job opportunities, to l research new employees and, and when you're going through the hiring process, it's become so more and more important as well. What are a couple of your tips, I suppose? I mean, we heard from Cliff before in terms of, you know, 
practical steps to doing it. The very first thing that I would do is go out and spend the $25 to actually purchase your domain name. So go to Network Solutions or one of those domain name providers and purchase your URL. Um, because what will happen is if you link, if you go and buy the, your domain name, set up a web page, link to your Twitter account, link to your LinkedIn account, uh, that's a really good way that web page will show up high in Google when somebody searches for your name. So mm. that's, that's probably the first step that I would take. Yeah. LinkedIn probably one of the most famous, uh, I suppose, brands, if you like, for these sorts of things. I mean, how should people approach it? You went through a couple of steps, but I mean, when people think, okay, well, now I need to get a part of this, what are the first sort of steps? Well, I think first and foremost, one's got to think of how one wants to be presented on the web. Mm. So if one wants to think of it from a Google search point of view, if I was to say to someone, when in the last six months did you last go to Google and do a search on someone, everyone would raise their hand and say, absolutely, they did a Google search on someone in the last six months. And what I always say to people, well, if someone, if you did a search on someone, you can be rest assured they're searching on you. Mm. And you've got to ask yourself, how do you then want to be presented on the web? And do you want the first thing to appear on a Google search result to be pictures of you at your high school reunion? Or do you want your LinkedIn profile to appear, which you're completely in control of, it presents you in the best possible light, um, and it allows you to control all the settings and the content on that page? Carol, I suppose it's, it becomes a, an aspect of trying to manage your online reputation, which mm. is something which you, I assume, you have to protect and you know, mm. be vigilant over. You already have an, most people already have an online reputation, and it might be the complaint that you made to council that made it into mm. the local paper. So um, I, I, I agree with Clear. An audit is the first place that I would go to. I do it, an audit of how people are looking for me, perhaps on LinkedIn. Um, I do a Google audit. And I'd do an audit on myself to know what I wanted to present as well. That's the first, first place that I would start. And then you can have tools like blogs, which are a great platform. Um, and things like LinkedIn and other social media platforms actually give you a front page on ranking on your name that you control. And James, if I may add in there, I think it's very important to notice that the more comprehensive your profile is on a site like LinkedIn, the higher you're possibly going to appear on those Google search results. So the more comprehensive you have uh, your skills, your achievements, your career aspirations, the more you fill in, the more content, the higher those Google search results are going to be for you. It's interesting though, obviously there is this, this corporate side of it, but social media <coughs> in its genesis, I suppose, was about friends and about the individual, and about mm. your personal life. So Brian, how do you go about separating your personal life, I suppose, then from your corporate profile? I think, you know, if you're a CEO of a major global company, even based in Australia, um, I think you need to think about what is the 10% of the things that you'll be talking about that reflect your personality, because it's, it is important to maintain your professional profile and the things that you, mm. you're an expert on, but it's also important to give people your, I guess, your friends and your connections and your colleagues and your peers in the industry a little bit of insight into what your personality is like as well. So what, what are the things that really interest you outside of the office? Because people want to see what's the human side of you as well. People want to connect with people and that's why um, you know that's a separation between the corporate and the personal brand. If I'm looking for somebody to provide a personal service nowadays, say for example I'm looking for a recruitment consultant, I'll type that into LinkedIn mm. and it's the person that I want to connect with that's a, a, a spokesperson on behalf of that company. Cliff, is it a growing challenge though? I mean you hear these news reports and so forth about people potentially you know losing their jobs over something they tweeted mm. or pictures that have popped up on Facebook and so I mean, it is a challenge out there. Yeah, it's a challenge, but it's also a massive opportunity. It, mm. gi it gives individuals unprecedented power to manage their own personal profiles and their own personal brands. And far, you know, you're far better off being in control of it and managing it than letting things control you. So being, in essence, your own chief marketing officer enables you to take control of it and, and let it do what you want it to do. What about some of the other things that people can look at? Things like, I, I suppose, personalized blogs to try and you know, get their, their brand out there as well. And I suppose personalized email signatures and things like that. I mean, are these things that people can look towards as well, Brian? I think so as well. Like the customized email signatures, putting the link to your blog or to your mm. LinkedIn profile into your email signature is a great thing to do. Um, if you think about it, I send about two or 300 emails a day. And that's 300 people that I could reach out to and let them know about my blog or my LinkedIn profile as well. So it's a really simple thing to do. It's not something that you need to pay an agency to do either. It's something that's free and such a simple thing to do. Yeah. I, so, sorry, Karen. I mean, I, I, would in, I would encourage everyone to get a vanity URL on LinkedIn. You're able to go and actually secure your own personal name on LinkedIn as a URL. And that should be your signature on all the emails that you send out, as Brian suggests, on your business card. At conferences when you speak, it should link to that. 
Um, it's, an, it's an amazing way to brand yourself and get your name out there. Yeah. Carolyn, you agree? I, I do. I think um, you've got to invest, with tools like blogging, you actually have to invest time in that. Mm. And I wouldn't go and launch a professional blog unless I was a good writer, unless I understood the way that I communicated and what made me successful in that. Um, you'll find that to have a successful blog you actually have to do a lot of networking and any kind of little quirks that you do can be quite magnified online because you don't have context. Mm -hmm. So I would be investing in, in my writing skills and my communication skills and actually having a unique viewpoint um, with that blog as well. So before I launched a, a fully fledged blog. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. We're sadly we've run out of time. Everybody, thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And that is all for this week's edition of Technology Behind Business. You can watch the show again on our website at skynews.com.au. And you can follow me on Twitter at, at Dagger Nixon. I'm James Dagger Nixon. Thanks for joining us.